Our opening session is called The Algorithmic CEO. What on earth does that mean? We're about to find out. I have been learning from Ram Charan for decades now. Many of you know him. He's one of the world's most celebrated consultants. His list of clients would make your head spin. He seems to be friends with about 75% of the people in this room. An author of bestsellers. Uh, there's no one like him, and he is going to lead us in this session. So please welcome Ram Charan. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I'm honored to be here. Uh, my purpose here for the next 20 minutes is to ask you, to request you to think about and tell us what's on your mind. Collectively, we create a list of the challenges you're facing, we go after. Uh, challenges you're facing of many kinds, uh, being disrupted, or are you a disruptor? Are you seeing the new age CEOs and new age companies that are algorithmic? When you look at Larry Page and Sergio Brin, they are algorithmic. Zuckerberg is algorithmic. Uh, you see these people coming in, they understand what is the algorithms can do. They figure out what is the most challenging problems and their skills to be able to figure out what algorithms can do, they begin to move into those areas and they become the disruptors. So here, my purpose is to request you to please pair in twos and see what two challenges you have on your mind. Are we going to record that here on the yeah. screen so all of you will see collectively for this tremendous representation on a global basis of what is on the minds of the CEOs and we will discuss many of these today in the, head, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the whole agenda, but also in your networks, uh, clarify things on your mind going forward. So please take the next three minutes, pair in twos, and tell us what's on your mind, one or two challenges you are facing, okay? Let's go to it, find a partner. If you don't like your neighbor, feel free to move. It's okay to do that. <laughs> okay, let's get going. Let's get going. So we kicked off actually this morning in our session, innovation at scale, and I think this is so relevant, Ram, what you're doing. What is the definition of algorithmic CEO? So my question is, how do you really make day-to-day well-run CEOs who are very good in running linear innovation, how do you make them algorithm CEO? How do they balance the mentality of Larry Page and running an IBM or GE? That's a challenge. Excellent question, the balance. Give us something from here, please. Help us a bit. Yes, go ahead, Martin, please. Yes, please, go. I think, I think the discussion we were having is balance, balancing, sorry, stand up. Um, we talked about John Chambers yesterday. Yes. And then I was talking to John last night about this. And the question he asked me is, was I provocative enough in terms of the fact that he says 40% of the companies here will not be meaningful in 10 years' time, is he being challenging enough as a CEO? Excellent question. 52% of Fortune 500 since 2000 no longer independent. It has happened in 15 years. Give us something. Yes, please, stand up, please. Uh, uh, Nick Allen from Lenovo. I'm an independent director at Lenovo. My, my question, if you like, as a supervisor is how do I validate the view of the next couple of years that the senior leadership team have? A board, outstanding question. Many boards get the information through the management funnel. Correct? Great question. If I could use a supervisory board. How do they validate the thinking, the information? Great question. Go. Uh, well, you asked in terms of what's on your mind, and what I've been able to come out with is succession planning. How do you actually identify somebody? What are the traits that you should be looking for, which should make a good CEO? Huge question. It came in the morning session that the most important job of the board and helping by the CEO who is the right succession, what's the skill, what's required. And we also, it came out that <clears throat> some of the existing candidates may not be the right one. Think about that. 
Please, Vicky, go. Hi, I'm Vicky Esquire with Opportunity International and sit on a couple of boards as well as run nonprofit. And one of the things I think we have to think about as board members is we may not be thinking about the right quality of candidates as far as CEOs are concerned because we may not have the knowledge around looking at what are the qualities that the future needs. Three very critical questions. Just a one, then you have to work also on the board how to get that knowledge. The Board of Singapore tell, takes one week every year to go somewhere, including Silicon Valley, learn the new technologies, go at it, and try to get the ideas of what's happening on the outside. My point is not Singapore tell. My point is the board needs to get the knowledge, and that was your question going forward. Let's get some more. Give us something here, somebody. Well, just to the point of uh, the succession planning for the board involvement, the real question for the board is how do they ever get visibility down two or three levels? And uh, I've been involved with boards where you really know the first string very well, but Jack Welsh was not on the top 150 candidates when he was picked as CEO of uh, GE. Tom Ingebis at TI was a PhD engineer down three levels, but he's the one that turned the company around, so. Yeah, yeah. Welsh actually had resigned, had taken a job elsewhere. It was reversed. You had gone to the party, collected the gifts, and then somebody reversed it. Right. These are the things to figure out what's happening. That was the basic yeah. question. Get <laughs> something more here, please. <coughs> yeah, help us, be please. Stand up. Um, yeah, our question was, how do we change culture in t inside companies? Because we can identify the changing, the market changes, but how do we get everyone to come along with us? Thank you. Great question. How many of you have this culture issue on your minds? It's important. We've got to dig into this. Go. Here, please. Yeah. Nigel Batiste, Republic Bank in the Caribbean. Our, our challenge really is how do we evolve banking in the Caribbean? How does our organization become a leader? Yeah. Yeah. Great question. And the question is, many of us are here. We've got to get there. How do we get there? Yeah. Evolve it. Go in a bold way. It depends where you are. Help us, please, Rajan. Yeah. Uh, how do you uh, really pace growth? you know, accelerated growth in these kind of times and handle innovation as you grow. And the question is the how. Let's share some ideas as you meet each other. The other side of the equation is how fast is the external moving? If your speed is slower than the external, we have an issue going forward. Both great questions there. Give us something here, please. Help us a bit. Somebody give us something here. What's in your mind? Please stand up. I'm Carlos Labarte from Mexico City, and is how we CEOs plan for the mid-term and long-term with things moving so rapidly. A real dilemma. <clears throat> Balance short-term, long-term, medium-term, long-term. How do we plan? How do we act? And those who are public companies, how do we deal with the new demand of the major investors? Vanguard, State Street. BlackRock and the activist shareholder. What is this balance? How do we plan? How do we do a real, real issue? Jeff. Yes. Here, please. You didn't know it, but you're it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, please, uh, Michael Kaspar, World Fuel. Um, uh, how do you um, deal with the success that you have when you know all of the folks in your company have enjoyed success, but you have to change? So, how do you get that uh, to be owned by the organization? A real people issue. All of you know, you teach me, success is never final. What was successful, how do we change, how do we yeah. use? A yeah. real major issue, how to deal with that. Yeah. The curse of success. Curse of success. Yeah. Give us something from time. here, please. Help us. Uh, Gabriel of Xilinx. Um, a question we discussed is how do you balance between growth, profitability, existing business, and the new algorithmic businesses? Another question on balance. Right. Growth, profitability, cash. You have examples of companies where they don't show any profit through accounting conventions. Right. But their stock price continues to go up. Right. You know the company I'm talking about. See, what is the... <laughs> Sustainability, etc. All those questions you got to ask. What is this balance? Right. Give us something here, please. Help us a bit, Peter. Peter Dals from McKinsey. Uh, our question was also on the cultural front. How do you, when you're a 90-year-old or 100-year-old brand, 
how do you attract people with different profiles oh, and should reposition the brand to talent and the customers in the new spaces where the growth is? Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the new spaces go after. Give us something here, please. Help us a bit. Help us. Yeah, well, we were talking about, uh, as John Chambers said, when you're introducing new technologies, how do you get the, uh, the culture, the people to come along? The technology is the easy part, but the people's the hard part. Yeah. Once again, on people. Yeah. It's striking, actually, how many of these comments, I mean, if you think about the commonalities, a lot of them have to do with culture and people over and over, and a lot of them have to do with size and success, and the fact that the things that got you here won't get you where you need to go. We'll come back to all of these during the day today. And Jeff, yeah. not only us, is your next level ready for the new game? That's another question that have come out. Yeah. Go, please. Yeah, Helmut Ludwig. Uh, we spoke here with Yamana's son from um, Minolta. And then the key question is the challenges that we are facing are clearly global. So when we think about the exponential change, it's a global one. How do we avoid to build these pockets of Industry 4.0, Internet of Things, Japan has its own, India has its own. How do we really create their, an attractive and aggressive co community where we learn mutually from each other? Great question. Coming from various angles, what's your focus? Yeah. Where do you put disproportionate attention? Which one you choose? How do you take advantage of that? Yes, please. Here, Ron. Uh, Chris Murphy for Source Corporation. Uh, we talked about dealing with the disruption. You talked disruptive uh, economy, disruptive uh, change with digital, but also how do you deal with that with the threatening disruption from regulation and government right. policy right. and balancing that with disruptive, disruption from the activist investment community, right. which looks for very short-term results or wants to take advantage of the disruption you may be going through for their own benefit. Right. So here, the skill. You have multiple sources of disruption. Yeah. How do you select the focus? Where do you go? What do you do? What is the return on your time? You can't do everything. That's the major change. Ram, we're almost out of time here, but I want to ask your perspective on what you've heard. Because, like I say, there have been a lot of commonalities in people's concerns yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. What struck you most yeah. about Number one, the most important, is do you have the right CEOs going forward? Nothing overcomes the wrong CEO. And that is in the context of the future, not the context of the past. The track record of the past is helpful, but that's not the sole criteria. You've got to take risks going forward. Number two, is this idea of balancing you have lots of things coming in, government, et cetera, disruption by digitization, algorithms, and so on. See, so what is the right balance? How do you focus? How do you do? It's a balancing act. How do you spend your time? How do you spend your mental energy? And then how you run in the, in the ecosystem, what's happening? Short term, long term, people. Third is the culture. In the culture inside, the old ways to go through decision making into seven layers has to be dead can't afford it. Too slow. How do we change the culture going forward? And the last one is your succession, that how do you find these people, trained people? The, the thing I want to mention that has come out in both sessions, <clears throat> are you being disrupted or are you a disruptor? Do you have distinctive digitization inside? If you don't have it, do you run the risk of being disrupted? So those are the four major items. And to do these things that you're talking about, do people in this room need new skills, or do they need to get better at old skills? Yeah, number one, you do need new skills, you may have them. And we are doing it, we're seeing it. If you believe <laughs> that the algorithms, digitization, all that stuff is going to be important in every company, you gotta get knowledge. You gotta go and see what the people are doing it. You gotta get those knowledge-based, skill-based, you have to have it because your disruptors are masters of those particular skills. The second is your mindset. Your mindset has to change. From we've succeeded, we did well. You know the companies, they were number one and they no longer exist. I don't have to name them here. I mean they don't exist. And they declined in five years. They were number one, 53% market share, superb brand name, great everybody, everyone in this room used it. No longer there. 
So the mindset has to change looking forward, as Denise Ramos said in the earlier session from ITT, and that is we got to look to the outside, be relevant outside in 50% of your time roughly have to be on the outside. But nothing is more important than selecting your right people. That's the skill you have to have. That idea has never changed. The requirements are changing how to go forward. That's where you need to focus because your highest leverage is people. Your highest leverage is selecting people, putting them right people, and removing the, the, the weeds that create resistance. And we've got to move faster because here the change is exponential very fast. If a company that has 53% market share, fantastic image, and can disappear in four years, we have a live example of that going forward. It's unbelievable. You know, I, I don't know where the time has gone. We have to wrap up, but I always say you get more insights per minute with Ram Jaran than with just about anybody I know. Thank you, Ram. Thank you. So, Thank so you much. very much.